homeowners can experience some usual thing unusual things in the garden this time of year we have some volunteer master gardener interns to answer some of these questions here we have our master gardener intern sandy to answer one of these questions sandy what is this white powdery substance on these squash plates Jim, this is called powdery mildew. Uh, it looks almost as if a person has taken talcum powder and spread it onto the leaves. It's a cosmetic thing that can affect the leaves and the stems of plants, and it will usually start out as pale yellow spots on the lower leaves. Uh, eventually, some of the leaves may wither and, and die, uh, but uh, and it can affect on, on vegetables, it can affect the yield of the plants also. Master Gardener intern asked the next question. Julie, where does this powdery mildew come from? This uh, is a powdery mildew fungi, and uh, it's brought on by heavy humidity. And uh, if, we're, if it's followed by dry weather, it can really spread rapidly. It can affect vegetables like squash, pumpkin, cucumbers, and it can also affect flowers like phlox and zinnias. And again, it's mostly cosmetic vegetation. We have a master gardener intern with us today to answer the next question, Tim. Uh, Tim, how do we prevent this disease in the future? Well, uh, probably the best way to prevent the disease is when you're planting your garden, there's a couple of things that you can do. The first thing is to uh, really try to select plants, squash plants, etc., that are disease resistant to powdery mildew. Uh, there are a lot of varieties on the market, uh, and that would be one thing you can do. It's, it's not going to guarantee that you're going to get powdery mildew, but it's really uh, The second thing is when you're planting your garden, make sure that you're leaving plenty of space between your plants. That reduces the and this is the airflow, and that should also keep your powder mildew alive. And then the, the second category of things that you can do is during the growing season, um, you can make sure that you really uh, use good watering practices for your plants. And the, the one thing that you want to do is make sure that you're always watering at the base of the plant. And then along with that, make sure that you're watering early morning so that there's a chance for water for the water is so in and it doesn't increase the spread of the fungus. The other thing that you can do is if after all of these measures are taken you do start to see some powdery mildew, you could use um, either a, a fungicide, commercial fungicide or the home brewed version uh, that Carla talked about earlier and treat the uh, uh, parts of the plant that aren't affected or uh, unaffected. Master Gardener Interns Carla can answer another one of our questions. Carla, how do we save this plant? Well, Jim, as you can see, we have powdery mildew on the lower portion of this plant and uh, clean leaves on the top that aren't infected yet. Luckily for this plant, it's probably not going to be lethal to it. Uh, it is more cosmetic looking. Uh, but this could affect the yield of the vegetable and the size of the vegetable itself uh, if it goes on untreated. We can treat this plant with a fungicide. You can uh, spray the healthy leaves and also you could go to your neighboring healthy plants and treat those with fungicides also. Very good, thank you Carla. You're welcome. I'm going to be treating this plant that has powdery mildew on the uninfected leaves. In looking for the right product, I went to the UW Horticultural Extension website to look at the different chemical names that I would have to look for in our shops. I chose an organic substance, sulfur, and I looked at my bottle and saw the active ingredient is sulfur. Then I turned over my container and read my directions on mixing because this is a powder, but I'm going to use it in a spray form and this can be done that way, and looked at the directions on the best time, the best plant, and the right, um, if it was the right solution for powdery mildew. With that meeting all the requirements and mixing my solution, I'm going to treat not only the top side, let's turn this way because the wind is blowing, 
not only the top side of the leaf, but also remember that you have to do the bottom side. Apply this solution to the uninfected leaves. And don't forget, you can also work on your neighboring plants that are not infected. Jim with the Master Gardeners UW Extension, and I'd just like to comment on our cucumber bed that we have, in particular one plant. Uh, normally, I like aged cucumbers because of their spread and their uh, growth that they get. We have a new variety here that we planted and we did cage, but apparently you don't need a cage. Uh, it's called cucumber salad, and it's a hybrid, and very impressed with it, the fact that it stays small. Uh, as you can see, it wouldn't need a cage as opposed to the other ones that are growing and spreading, etc. Uh, this variety is also very early. We've got three pickings already and 12 pounds of cucumbers, which is great. Um, it's supposed to have a longer season. It seems to be more resistant to the powdery mildew. There's very little on the leaves as opposed to the other ones out there and the cucumbers seem to be quite nice the size wise and they're beautiful cucumbers so uh, we're very impressed with this and uh, hopefully they come out with more varieties this would fit in anybody's garden without having to worry about the spread or the taking over the cucumber and apparently it, we, we wouldn't need a cage on this one thank you